Okay, Aslam Lekum, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, CS5316 Natural Language Processing. Uh, so I'm Asim Kareem, as you may know. Uh, so, so this is the first lecture of uh, Natural Language Processing. Today we will be discussing the course outline, uh, briefly describing what we will be covering in this course, uh, the course content. We will also discuss briefly the policies that we'll be following in this course. We will also talk about uh, the grading that I have uh, outlined for this course. Uh, we'll talk about a few more things uh, uh, regarding the course and its modalities. After that, we will then jump straight into an introduction to NLP. So, uh, so the lectures would be online uh, through Zoom uh, and I'll be recording the lectures and the lectures would then be made available after class, maybe later in the day on YouTube. Uh, uh, I have a channel, KDLab Lumps. I'll share the link later on. So the videos would be made available on that uh, page. So, so during the lecture, you may uh, speak up uh, by unmuting yourself if you have any questions. You can also send text messages. I will be able to uh, listen to your text messages as it arrives. Uh, <clears throat> also, in general, if you don't have anything to say, please keep your mic muted so that uh, there is less disturbance. Uh, as I mentioned earlier as well, uh, you are not required to have your picture or video on during the lectures, but during the uh, quizzes, which would be online, uh, you are required to have your video on or your camera on. And of course, uh, the recording, if done for the quizzes, would not be published uh, anywhere, so that, that would be private. So with that, I think let's get started uh, with the course outline. I hope you can see my screen. So let's uh, look at the description of the course. Uh, this course is uh, 5316. It's a graduate course. Uh, of course, it has a graduate listing, but undergrads can also take this course. So this course would discuss the foundations of natural language processing. Uh, it will talk about uh, the various fundamentals uh, required to be able to process natural language. Uh, natural language. Uh, we'll talk about natural language and define natural language more formally shortly. Uh, so in general, we will be talking about understanding, characterizing, uh, processing, analyzing text, textual content. Uh, this course is not focusing on natural language in the form of speech. So there will be little uh, discussion of speech processing in this course. Actually, there's another course now offered at LUMS on speech processing. So that course will be covering the aspects of speech processing. Uh, and we will discuss briefly later on what are the differences uh, between the two courses. So we'll be talking about uh, uh, various, discussing various topics in this course, starting from basic string processing, uh, things like added distance uh, and uh, regular expressions. We will then move on to uh, language modeling, which is a fundamental uh, topic uh, as well as concept in natural language processing. And this concept will continue for a fair amount of this course. We'll start with n-gram modeling, which is a probabilistic approach to statistical or probabilistic or statistical approach to language modeling. And later on, we will see that we'll talk about neural network approaches for this. 
We will then also talk about uh, some classifiers from machine learning, specifically naive-based logistic regression and its application to text classification, specifically sentiment classification, which is, of course, a topic in NLP. So towards the later end of this course, we will have a fair amount of uh, neural networks or deep neural networks because modern NLP is essentially machine learning and also essentially deep uh, learning. Uh, we will see how uh, deep learning models can be applied to tackle NLP problems. So most of the programming would be in Python because most of the libraries for NLP are in Python. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, no uh, discussion on speech processing, and it's most appropriate for uh, graduates as well as for undergrads, uh, ideally for seniors. So I will quickly go over the objectives and learning outcomes. This can be sometimes boring, but I think just for completeness sake, I'll go over this quickly. So we will be introducing the fundamental uh, concepts in natural language processing. Uh, another focus would be on the implementation and evaluation of NLP algorithms. So, uh, so of course, whenever you have a problem, you need to first formulate the problem uh, and see which NLP task needs to be applied. So once you have you are able to identify that, then you are you should be able to implement it in code, and then very importantly, you should be able to evaluate it object evaluate your results objectively. So evaluation is uh, an essential component. So uh, so after this course, you should be able to do this. Uh, NLP is also heavily resource dependent, uh, so. So there are various resources available. You can call them uh, the simplest resource in NLP, NLP, of course, would be like a dictionary, but there are many other resources and you'll be exposed to such resources and how to use them in solving NLP problems. So learning outcome is uh, similar to objectives, but it has a much longer list. Uh, you can quickly go through this as well. So textual uh, natural language, you should be able to process it. Uh, and then of course, segmented. Segmented is basically meaning that find relevant chunks from that text uh, and uh, we will see various ways of segmenting uh, text. So uh, natural language has various aspects. Two aspects are syntax and semantics. And these typically represent uh, meaning as well as structure in the text. So you should be able to extract that uh, for whatever application that you are building. And if you talk about techniques, you should be able to apply uh, algorithmic approaches, probabilistic approaches, and neural network approaches uh, to solve your problem. And again, resources, you should be able to use resources to solve your NLP problem. So we will be talking briefly on and off about uh, multi-language. Of course, the major language that we'll be talking about is English. And but we will briefly also talk about regional languages, especially Urdu, and see how uh, uh, NLP can be applied to such languages as well. So, so any questions so far? All right. <clears throat> so the prereq for this course uh, uh, does cause a bit of problem sometimes. Uh, so for the undergrads, I've, I've set the prereq as 
uh, advanced programming, which is CS300. Uh, the primary reason was that uh, you should have a fair amount of programming uh, experience before coming into this course. And someone who has taken uh, advanced programming would also have done other relevant courses in the CS, for example, CS202 uh, data structures. Uh, so that was one of the reasons for placing this requirement. The other, of course, was, uh, I mean, it's, I think, more appropriate for people who are at the senior level. So I think and most seniors must have done uh, advanced programming. Uh, I think there was a question somewhere. It's, give me a second. Uh, yes, uh, if you're talking about informal languages, yes, uh, we should be able to process informal languages as well because it still consists of strings. So, so we will talk about informal uh, languages as well during this course. So there are no prereqs for grads. Uh, we are assuming that they have taken all the necessary courses. So the requirement that would be seen during this course, uh, the content, background content that would be required as part of this course would of course be statistics and probability. Uh, but I think most of you have taken uh, probability as well as uh, applied probability for graduates. So that is more than enough. Uh, you don't need more than that. But it would be handy to have notes or textbook ready uh, whenever required to refer to it. So data structures and algorithms, uh, again, the primary purpose is you should be able to understand algorithms and understand simple data structures. So algebra, linear algebra, you will see vectors and matrices, uh, especially when, when we are talking about neural networks. So machine learning is not required, but if you have taken machine learning, then it will certainly help because there is overlap with machine learning. And just a couple of points regarding overlap. So all of these courses are elective courses. So overlap uh, in elective courses do occur. So we can't avoid uh, overlap uh, because of completeness to ensure completeness. Uh, but if it was a, a core course, let's say if you talk about AI, which is a core course for the undergrads, uh, and if there was another core course, then usually we try to avoid uh, much overlap in core courses. But there are many now elective courses uh, in the AI, machine learning, data science stream, and many of them do have overlaps. But I think overlaps does help students as well. You get a better perspective uh, of the topic. Uh, in this case, of course, in NLP, you get uh, machine learning uh, as applied to NLP or, or textual content. <clears throat> so as I said before, most of the programming would be in Python. Okay, I think this is something that you must be waiting for. Uh, the grading that I've thought about for this course uh, this was actually modified even again yesterday because of some changes. Uh, so the quizzes would be uh, about eight in number and they will be held during class time and they will be on Zoom and LMS. Uh, so usually quizzes are taken at the end of the class and they will be around 10 to 12 minutes long and conducted on LMS, okay, and the weightage would be 15%. So we are planning about four assignments and the weightage for that would be 20. There is also going to be a project 15%. This would of course be a group project. Uh, the number of people in the group, uh, we are going to decide later, I think two or three maximum. Uh, the projects uh, can be decided by you. Uh, I'm not going to give you fixed projects. Of course, I'm going to give you ideas, but uh, uh, you can uh, 
selected topic after discussion with me or the TAs of your own choice. Okay, the midterm and final exams uh, would most likely be on campus and the weightage are 25-25. So uh, even though this course is online, I think there was a decision that was made uh, yesterday that uh, uh, we can have our exams on campus. So if we have those exams on campus, then the weightages uh, are mentioned here, 25 and 25. Uh, of course, usually in all my courses, uh, the final is not cumulative. Uh, there might be one or two topics from pre-mid, from mid. Uh, so basically, if you have covered something uh, till midterms, it will be tested in the midterm exam. And then everything after the midterm exam would be tested in the final exam. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, any questions or comments on this? Uh, there was a question. Uh, yes, the quizzes would be announced. Uh, so the quizzes would be announced usually in the previous lecture. So let's say if there's going to be a quiz on Thursday, I will mention it in, in class on Tuesday. So let's move on to the next slide, which has some policies and these are more or less standard policies uh, for my courses as well as for many other courses at LUMS, but I think just for refresher sake and as well as, well as for completeness purposes, I am going to go over them again. So the quizzes, uh, as mentioned, most quizzes would be announced and uh, they will be announced in the previous lecture. Uh, okay, so there's a question on final exam schedule. So uh, why would you want to change the final exam schedule? Usually that's fixed. So we can talk about that, I think, later on. If you have some special circumstances, uh, we can talk about that later on. So I mentioned that unannounced quizzes are also possible. So there is a possibility. Uh, okay, one more exam on that day. Uh, okay, so we can discuss that later, I think. Uh, but as I said, there is no real guarantee for the final exam. The midterm exam, for us, is other my flexibility. Hoti hai. Final exam may maybe it is a flexibility hoti because there might be other people who might have clashes. So we can decide discuss that later on. So I mentioned that the final and midterm exam will be held online or on campus. And from what was decided yesterday, it looks like most likely it will be on campus unless uh, of course the pandemic situation worsens, uh, in which case it will be online and online will be on LMS and Zoom. So during the exam, as well as in the quizzes, you are required to have your video on. Policies well, it's light blank area. Us me up a highlight area, but like text visible. Nahi hai. Uh, uh, just a second. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And next slide we are going to pitch Chica, just a second. Chica? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, s
आप नजर आ रही सारी यस सर ठीक है सो आई थिंक वी हैड कवर मोस्ट ऑफ दिस पॉलिसीज so the submission policies for assignments is that you will be given a date and time and if you are late by one day you will have a penalty of 10% if you are late by two days you will have a penalty of 20% and usually assignments are not accepted after the second day so in other words uh, there will be a penalty of 100% after that so the standard policy regarding sharing uh, for assignments you can discuss assignments with others uh, but you need to submit assignments independently so each one uh, should be able to understand and explain should be able to explain what he or she has done and the assignment of course would be evaluated maybe through a viva <clears throat> uh and of course if you are caught uh, having uh, done some <clears throat> unfair or unethical behavior you can be reported to the uh, disciplinary committee by the way now the dc is uh, sse based and it usually processes cases much more quickly so we have a separate committee uh, that is school based so plagiarism uh, again is an unethical practice uh, basically it means that you are taking someone's else work and calling it yours uh, if you have taken something from the web uh, you should always cite that work uh, give proper credit to where you have taken from where you have taken that work and again uh, you can face penalties for violations uh, again we have uh, Uh, policies regarding uh, uh, diversity or inclusion and harassment free environment so so in general you should respect diversity in general uh, the world environment are, around us is very diverse and you should respect and in general also uh, you can say benefit from diversity rather than being uh, close minded uh, and then in general also you should be you should maintain professional behaviors in your interactions professional also includes ethical behaviors so cheating and other behavior are generally not accepted uh okay so we don't have attendance uh, requirement in this course uh but in general people who attend courses uh, lectures regularly do perform better and this is based on my experience even if you are able to look into videos later on uh that's fine but uh for those who follow the lectures live and maybe ask and participate in the lectures uh, they typically do well in the course getting better grades on average a uh, few statements regarding uh, philosophy so learning is an active process it's not a passive process uh, if you just sit there and listen maybe you won't be able to gain much so you need to be active uh, while learning as well uh, that includes question asking questions or doing things so and of course we will be encouraging you to ask questions as well as to be involved in various activities like assignments and projects and so on so all of this is uh, done to promote learning so and in general you are taking this course so you should be excited about the content and if you are excited then you typically go beyond what is covered in class and uh, try to learn things from other 
sources as well. And that basically supplements your learning or enhances your learning. So regarding grading, uh, I don't typically do strict grading, uh, but of course we still need to rank students and assign them grades based on their performance. And the only way that we can gauge performance is through the various instruments that we have defined in this course, the project, the exams, and so on. So uh, of course, uh, you will be given grades at the end of the course, and they will be based on some ranking uh, derived from the performances that you have done in this course. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> actually, my voice is kind of breaking, so I don't know if you are able to hear me properly. Oh, all right, <clears throat> any questions so far? So this slide uh, gives you a quick view of the course content that we'll be uh, covering. So we'll start with the introduction today with some examples. And uh, the next lecture, uh, we will be talking about text processing, but before that, I think there will be some uh, 20, 30 minutes about linguistics. So I've not mentioned linguistic here, but linguistic, uh, some terms and terminologies from linguistic is important for learning NLP. So we will discuss that uh, in the next lecture. And then we'll move on to text processing, basic text processing, starting from regular expressions, uh, string matching, added distance, and so on. We'll then talk about language modeling with n-grams. So n-grams is a name that is commonly used in NLP, but essentially it is probabilistic language modeling. So we will discuss uh, the basic concepts as well as some of the estimation techniques uh, that are commonly used in NLP. So we then talk about classification, talk about naive Bayes, logistic regression, and the application of sentiment classification, as well as other text classification like topic classification or spam classification and so on. Uh, then we'll move on to some more recent topics, which has kind of revolutionized NLP nowadays, uh, which is uh, vector representations and embeddings. And we'll talk about some popular embeddings like uh, word to vec and uh, and then we'll move on to neural networks and its application in various NLP tasks like language modeling. We'll also talk about sequence modeling for POS tagging. POS tagging, basically part of speech tagging. Uh, NER is named entity recognition. We'll talk about these terms in this course. Uh, also sequence neural networks can also be used for classification, text classification. So we'll also talk about some more recent uh, architectures uh, in neural networks, which we call the transformer, attention-based uh, neural networks called the transformer, which are now quite uh, common for NLP applications. And we'll also discuss contextual embeddings, uh, which are usually based on uh, transformers, like BERT, for example, for those who know. Uh, we'll talk about some applications like machine translation, uh, question answering, and chatbots. Uh, this will be towards the end of the course. Uh, also, we'll talk about some semantics and text resources like WordNet and uh, resources for sentiment classification. All right. <clears throat> So the textbook for this course is a very popular book uh, and also a long running book for NLP. It's titled Speech and Language Processing by Jurafsky. Jurafsky is from Stanford. Uh, uh, the title of course is Speech and Language Processing, but the modern, uh, the latest edition has very little content on speech because earlier time, it was primarily focused on speech, but uh, to understand speech properly, you need to know standard natural language processing better. So 
So most of the book, or I would say 90% of the book is standard textual natural language processing and speech is just maybe one chapter. But of course you can go deeper into speech processing uh, because you, you can talk more about phonetics, phonology, uh, you can talk about signal processing, for example, and you can talk about things like uh, mm, pattern recognition, which is done in the signal domain, not in the textual domain. But the fundamentals like linguistics and uh, uh, other properties of language uh, are mostly covered in the NLP course. So this book is available online. I think I have the web page open. So this is the book's web page. Uh, so you can Google it and you will find this web page. So this has all the chapters we will be covering, primarily chapters one to uh, 11. So we'll cover until 11 primarily, mostly, and then we'll covering, I think, a few other chapters, like uh, I think the chapter on effects, which is sentiments, I think that is 18, and then 23 and 24, which is on chatbots and question answering. So essentially a fair amount of this book would be covered. We will not actually be covering everything, every subsection of this uh, book. So some subsections might be skimmed, you can say, uh, and of course, uh, but I would still say most of it would be covered, but it might not be covered to that depth uh, in class. So, so all the PDFs are available from this page. You can download them for yourself. So other books are also available. One other book that is uh, more advanced and has more variety of topics is this book by Agarwal, uh, Machine Learning for Text. Uh, so if you have access to this book, that would be great as well. And there's an older popular book, uh, which is Natural Language Processor with Python. Uh, uh, I think this is also available online. You can uh, get a hands-on with this. So a lot of stuff is also available on the web. So you can always supplement your reading by simple Google search. So the course material will be distributed through LMS. The class lectures would be posted on YouTube. Uh, the YouTube channel is Cade Lab Lums. Uh, you can Google search it and you will find the channel. And by the way, this channel also, also has the lectures from previous year. Uh, you can also look at them because uh, from last year to this year, we have not changed the content. And the content is essentially the same. But uh, of course, I will be posting the new lectures as well. So I have not uh, announced my office hours yet. I'm still uh, working out my timings. I, I will let you know. Uh, uh, of course, you know my email and my room number. Uh, I will be available on campus. Uh, again, I don't have the exact uh, schedule right now. Let you, I will let you know shortly. Uh, so it looks like uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have back-to-back -back lectures. Both of them are online. So probably it will be difficult for me to make it to campus. And if I do make it to campus, then I will be there since morning because the first lecture starts, of course, at 10 a.m. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I will try to be on campus, but I'll let you know the details later on. Uh, so we have two TAs selected already for this course. Uh, one is Saad uh, Arshad or Ishad. 
and the second is Zishan. Uh, these guys would also uh, let, let you know their details later on. So, and they will be announcing their office hours and other stuff to you later on. All right, so any questions so far? So we have already spent like 30, 40 minutes. All right, so if you don't have any questions, uh, we can then move on to the uh, actual content of this course. Uh, I have not placed the uh, uh, lectures on LMS, uh, the slides on LMS. I will do that uh, after class. Actually, I, sh I, will be able, I will be able to post most of these uh, slides before class because they are already made. And most of them are based on the slides of the book that I mentioned earlier on. Of course, I've made some minor changes here and there, and I might have some, some slide that I made myself. So it's a mix of uh, multiple things. Mm -hmm. All right, so, uh, so let's start with uh, the introduction to NLP. Here we'll talk about uh, what NLP is and look at some uh, typical uh, applications and examples of NLP. We will then also talk about uh, why NLP is difficult or challenging and the general framework in which we do NLP, meaning that the approach that we take to solve NLP problems, general approach. So this is uh, covered in these slides, and this is actually chapter one of speech and language processing. So speech and language processing is often abbreviated sometimes as SLP, so SLP third edition. Uh, the third edition, by the way, is uh, posted uh, December, 2021, so it's uh, updated uh, frequently. So what is natural language processing? So natural language processing is uh, basically computational approaches for processing natural language, very simply. So we talk, we have the keyword processing and we have another keyword, keyword natural language. So we'll briefly qualify both of these keywords. So processing basically involves or can include multiple things or it can have many things. So you can think about acquisition, acquiring, representation, characterization. So store or transmission can also be part of it. You need to generate language that could also be part of it. Uh, you need to uh, transmit, store, uh, understand, for example, characterize can mean you need to classify a piece of text. Uh, so all of these things that 
are based on natural language can be included in processing and this would be part of NLP. So the second keyword is natural language. So what is natural language? So natural language are human languages. So these are the languages that we, me and you talk uh, or use in our daily activities uh, that we use in our studies. And of course, as you know, there are many human languages out there, uh, hundreds and uh, even thousands of languages out there. And of course, uh, some languages are resource rich, uh, other languages are low resource languages. So resource rich language would be like English and French and Spanish and maybe even Chinese and so on. But there are many other languages that are low resource languages. So you can think about Pashto, for example, even Urdu can be also characterized as low resource because we have few resources available. And when we say resource, uh, usually we talk about computational resource, resource that can be utilized readily by computers. And of course, there are other languages, maybe, for example, some African languages or uh, South American languages, they don't even have uh, printed resources available. So those are really, truly uh, low resource languages. But the distinction that we want to make is uh, we have natural language and we have formal language. So formal language is the language that you use for programming, for example. So Java would be a formal language. Python would be a formal language. SQL, SQL would be a formal language. While English and Arabic, Urdu, these are human languages. So the focus uh, in NLP, of course, is human languages, not formal languages. Of course, the techniques that we study in NLP can be applied and are usually applied for formal languages as well. But of course, human languages have more complexities, which we'll talk about later today. Uh, so, so that makes uh, human language processing much more challenging or interesting or difficult. So uh, NLP is known by many other names. Uh, some popular names are computational linguistic or human language technologies and so on. So, I hope this point is clear. So there are two points here actually. One is uh, the, what is natural language and the other is what we mean by processing. Processing essentially means everything. So if you are given a string of text, you should be able to extract, uh, for example, uh, the name of a person from that text or if you are given a piece of text, you can determine the polarity of that text. Polarity means whether it is expressing a positive sentiment or a negative sentiment, or it is neutral and so on. So all of these possibilities are part of processing. So let's look at some applications and and these uh, applications uh, are you can say now widely available. <clears throat> uh, one is question answering. So NLP can do question answering or question answering is a key task in NLP. And the example that is slowed, shown in this slide is the IBM Watson system that was uh, basically is a computer-based system that won Jeopardy. Jeopardy is a quiz competition way back in 2011. And Jeopardy basically is a factoid, uh, factual, you can say, question answering uh, competition where you have a question and the answer usually is a name, name of a person, name, uh, some named entity. We'll talk about named entity as well later on. So it could be a name of a person, it could be a date, it could be a location and so on. So as you can see, uh, for an automatic system to do this, it needs to understand the question first. And the question, of course, is written in natural language. It's not written in computer language. It's natural language written in a way that we, me and you speak. 
And once it has understood the question, it then needs to find the answer for that question. So from the question, it needs to know what it is what is required, and then it has to go out and get that answer. So the question answering basically thus involves two main components. One is question understanding, and then of course, answer retrieval. Of course, there are other components as well. We will discuss this later on, but this is uh, just an example. Uh, so this was way back in 2011, question answering and chatbots, which is related to question answering, and I have a slide on that later on, are more advanced nowadays, and they do a much better job at answering que complex questions. You can think of Google as a question answering system as well. So in the Google box, you can put in any question, and the first answer that you get is usually a snippet, is the answer that you are seeking. So, so Google itself is now a very capable uh, question answering system. So another key task uh, in uh, natural language processing is information extraction. Uh, of course, this name information extraction is somewhat generic, but Whenever it is used in this uh, context, it basically means that extracting relevant information from running text, from textual content or from natural language. Natural language in general can also be speech, but as I said, we are focusing primarily on text in this course. So, a key uh, one example that's given in this slide is let's say if you have an email someone sends you an email with a meeting request so it said email written in normal form uh, in, in other words it's human language in natural language uh, but your automatic system should be able to extract the relevant information and place it into the calendar so what are the relevant information meaning for example the, what is the title of the meeting or the purpose of the meeting if there's an agenda, put the agenda, extract the agenda from the written text. What is the date of the meeting? What is the venue of the meeting? So all of this is extracted automatically from the textual content. So this extraction uh, is information extraction. And I think these apps or plugins are now readily available for most uh, 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 you can say email clients for Outlook. You can have a plugin that can do this for you automatically. Uh, in fact, for Outlook, it has other, uh, you can say, intelligent features as well. For example, if you are writing a message, so like for example, if I write a message in Outlook and say that, please find attached the uh, requested document, and then if I forget to attach the document, it will remind me. So how does it know that I have not? I, I wanted to send an attachment from the understanding the text. So these kind of features are now, you can say, becoming mainstream. And all of this is NLP. Uh, information extraction, uh, can also provide sentiment analysis. So all of you are familiar with uh, reviews of products and services posted on the web. Uh, so usually when you talk about, you look at a review, uh, there are various aspects of the product or service that you wanted to have feedback on or an understanding on. So for example, if it's a camera, uh, you might be interested in knowing the quality of the lens, for example, which is an aspect or attribute of the camera. Or you might want to know this, how the camera compares with other cameras with respect to the weight or body size, or for example, the battery life. So all of these are attributes, features, or aspects of a product or service on which you need to want opinions of others. So those opinions, of course, are written on the web, but you need to then combine them and collate, collate them and maybe present them in a nice way. 
So if you do that, so then that becomes sentiment analysis. For example, by looking through various blogs and reviews, you might find out the lens of this camera XYZ is considered to be poor. So that poor rating is not found from one review, it's found from multiple reviews by extracting where there's a mention of the lens and what is mentioned about the lens. Of course, sentiment analysis can be done at a course level also, which is called sentiment classification. For example, you have one uh, message, let's say, uh, for example, if you have a message like uh, the camera had a, the camera was heavy, for example, this was just a simple message. So this, the sentiment that's expressed here, is this positive or negative? The camera was heavy. For this particular product, this is a negative sentiment. So you want to classify such sentiments as well. But maybe for some other product, heaviness might be a positive trait, not a negative trait. So all of these understandings has to be obtained or gauged by your NLP processing algorithm. So there could be various attributes for and products and these attributes might be different. So for example, if you are review, reviewing a car, so the attributes might be different, the power of the car or the fuel economy of the car. But if you're talking about a camera, it might be affordability, size, lens quality, battery life, and so on. So each product might have a different set of attributes that are of relevance to the public or to the consumer. So first of all, finding those attributes and then in a way ranking them is also part of NLP. So, so the, the application that we have talked about so far, we will be discussing these application in more details and you should be able to solve some of these tasks after completing this course. So machine translation is another very popular application of uh, NLP and it is now quite accurate. Uh, this, this slide is somewhat dated but if you go to translate.google.com, you have tons of languages across which you can do translation. I think this site has a uh, translator from Stanford, but translate.google.com, and of, of course, there are translators from Microsoft and other companies as well. So they do a very good job of translation. Uh, just type in text, for example, in Urdu, you will get the text in English or type in the text for English, you get the text in Chinese. So machine translation, uh, again, is an application of NLP. You have a source text, you have a target text. Both of them are in different human languages. But the idea is that you want to keep the semantics of the source in the target. So chatbots have become quite popular in recent years. Uh, uh, chatbots are conversational agents. So they are now used in various uh, segments of the society. Uh, they can be used for business purposes, for entertainment purposes, for even medical purposes. Uh, so you have chatbots available. Uh, essentially, a chatbot is a, you can say, a virtual person who listens to your questions or listens to your comments and gives feedback. So it is interacting with you. So in other words, for a chatbot to work, it should be able to understand your comments or question and make appropriate responses in natural language to that comment or question and also follow a conversation. Conversation means that it's not just one question answered. It is a whole thread of questions or statements or uh, conversations. So it should, in other words, be able to maintain 
uh, a history of what has been spoken previously. Uh, chatbots could be textual based or it could be speech based. Uh, you, you are all familiar with speech based chat, chatbots like Google Assistant and uh, Alexa and Siri and so on. And of course, text based chatbots are quite now common on the web on, let's say, uh, many, uh, you can say, um, companies' website for customer support for. Uh, other uh, such applications, you will find uh, chatbots. Chatbots are also available for, for example, placing orders for restaurants and uh, uh, you can say e-commerce in general. So these are some examples that I've listed here. Uh, you can go over them in your free time, but uh, of course you can also find more of them as well. So one of the key things that the trend that is emerging is that chatbot is going to be the new UI of the future, user interface of the future. So currently the user interface is uh, like a computer where you have a keyboard and you have a screen, but the future chatbot might be just a, uh, a future interface might just be a chatbot like Google Assistant, a box placed somewhere, you talk to it and the box does the task for you. So, so for example, you can ask it to set an alarm, for example, or make an appointment or book a flight, or for example, get deliveries from Food Panda and so on. So all of that would be done through uh, a chatbot interface, not a standard UI. So any questions so far? So uh, I'll just basically uh, ask you if you have any other application of NLP or anything that interests you in NLP that you have seen recently or you're familiar of, you may want to share it with others. Anyone? So in ke lava ko your application aapko pata ho that you are really excited about or anything new that has cropped up in NLP. NLP is an active area. Um new things are coming out, interesting things. Anyone? So author detection based on text. So the, yeah, that's an application and quite popular nowadays actually. Uh, and author detection usually is a text class. Uh, author. So author detection is basically a text classification problem. Uh, basically, given any text, you want to determine whether this belongs to speaker A or speaker B, or is it written by, uh, for example, Asif or Asim, for example. So, and I think there was some other, uh, other application, let me see. Uh, I think uh, kuch the text, I missed some of them. Text analytics, tha, in general, so text analytics is a general statement, I think. Uh, anything that is done on text can be called text analytics. Uh, in fact, NLP can also be called as text analytics. Uh, but if you are talking about uh, specifically regarding uh, 
the words that people use in different contexts. Uh, so that could also be called text analytics. So for example, a company might want to know how many times the word bad has been used in conjunction with a particular product of theirs. So such kind of analytics can also be done through NLP. Uh, okay. Okay. PowerPoint crash. <clears throat> All right. All right, so let's uh, move forward, although we have about 10 minutes left, but there are a couple of interesting slides available. Okay. Okay, so, so basically NLP, uh, is difficult. And it, we have a number of slides, two or three slides here that highlight why NLP is difficult. So crash blossoms uh, actually is a noun. Uh, if you Google search it, uh, it's a noun. It basically describes a sentence uh, in which uh, the wording, the syntax and the words are ambiguous. And there are some examples given in this slide. Uh, so it's not, uh, for example, blossom might be thought of as a related to flowers and crash, of course, is crash flowers, whatever. But if you Google search it, this represents or it's the meaning uh, is it's a noun that represents a word or phrase or sentence which has ambiguous meaning. So if you look at each of these headings, uh, it's kind of difficult to decipher exactly what is meant. So red tape holds up new bridges, for example. So red tape, if you read literally, uh, it's of course red tape, but here red tape is referring to, for example, bureaucracy or uh, uh, hurdles in the way of progress. And uh, so, <laughs> seven foot doctors and so on. So all of these are real headings, but as you can see, even humans have somewhat difficult task understanding such headings and what to say about a computer. So, so ambiguity is, so what we are talking about in natural language is this ambiguity, but ambiguity is quite pervasive. Uh, it's everywhere. It's, uh, you can say, ubiquitous in natural language. So again, this is another example. So Fed raises interest rate. So Fed, FED, of course, for those who follow, uh, who have some idea of the US uh, environment, Fed refers to the state bank, like here in Pakistan. Uh, and so for some, some other Fed, of course, could be a simple past tense of feed, for example. So all of this has to be understood in context. It has to be understood uh, 
uh, based on know, having world knowledge, for example, uh, and humans can do this and they have gained world knowledge and gained knowledge of the language over time. But what about computers? So that's the challenge. So, so there are many reasons why a natural language is difficult. For example, informal text. So that makes natural language processing difficult. So nowadays we have writings uh, on the social media that are often informal. They do not fo follow standard grammatical rules. Uh, they might be spelling errors. There might be other uh, issues like abbreviations and contractions and uh, mixture of languages. If you have two languages in one sentence, basically we call it code switched. So there is switching of code between two languages. So this makes NLP hard in practice. So you also have other phenomena like idioms. So idioms do not translate literally. So for example, dark horse or beating around the bush or uh, once in a blue moon, for example. So all these phrases, uh, this collection of words, multi-words do not translate literally. Once in a blue moon basically refers to something that occurs rarely, but uh, uh, of course, if you do a literal translation, you get something else. Dark horse, for example, or beating around the bush. There are many of the, such terms in English, for example. Uh, so there are also new words that are coined frequently. Uh, you can think of COVID as a new name in modern days, C-O-V-I-D. So if you look at the literature that was written two years before our time, you will never see the word COVID. But now uh, COVID, I think, I think uh, last year's, uh, or I think the previous year's, uh, the most popular word that Times Magazine uh, kind of identifies was COVID. So, so all of these things uh, evolve and change over time. So for example, people who work on, uh, use the social media, retweet, for example, is a new word. Uh, Bromance, for example, is a new word. So, so new words come up uh, frequently. And also some words also fade out. They become unpopular. If you read uh, Shakespeare literature, many of the words that Shakespeare used at that time are no longer being used today. So cultures and history uh, kind of changes language over time. So basically new words, neologisms, uh, neologisms. So these are new words, words that are coined recently. Unfriend, for example. So they are also tricky entity names. So, so there are movie names out there. They are uh, also, for example, to give you an example in uh, Urdu, Barkat, for example, is a standard word, but Barkat can also be the name of a person. So, the complexes are numerous in natural language. That makes natural language interesting as well as challenging. Word knowledge is also important. If there are some people's name being mentioned, for example, they might be related. But if you don't know if they are related or not, you might not be able to understand the context properly. So, for example, if there's a mention of uh, a queen and, uh, for example, his son, uh, for example, Queen Elizabeth and, for example, Williams, uh, we know that they are mother and son, but uh, a computer needs to know that bef before it can do proper inferences. I think I will probably stop here, and in the next lecture, we, uh, we will start with a couple of more slides from uh, this, and then we'll move on to linguistics, uh, which is uh, an introduction to the terms and terminologies that are used in linguistics. Any questions?
सो एनी क्वेश्चन सो फार किसी का कोई और कोई कमेंट कोई एनरोलमेंट का इशू रिकॉर्डिंग बंद नहीं की